protection is the number one thing you have to think about. Like, how do you get through this bear fully intact where you're basically neutral and you still have all your money? And then when the bull comes, that's when you make your big money. You know, as you develop and study the charts, you start to see patterns repeating over and over again. And then, you know, when, when price hits this level, it seems to always do this on this chart. It could be a stock chart. It could be a, a currency chart or a, a commodity chart. And there are things that replicate over and over again. And so, so for instance, on Bitcoin, it's one of those scenarios where, you know, I noticed very early on over the last couple of years that there's a four year cycle, right? So, so for me, as much as I love the idea of Bitcoin long term, it's like, well, if we know we're coming into a cycle and we have a classic double top, which is a technical term for resistance, why would I be in Bitcoin up there and just hold it knowing that price is going to come down? So it's it's a very hard kind of thing for me to get over and get to that long term investor mentality when it's like, well, if I wait a week, I can buy it a lot cheaper. Why wouldn't I do that? Right. Yeah. So so that's kind of where I come from. And and in looking at the charts, it's all about price pattern and time. Um, when you're analyzing charts, what you're actually doing is analyzing human emotion. And you might say, you know, this is the weirdest thing ever. What, how would that be human emotion? Well, remember charts go up and down by buyers and sellers. So when charts are going up, people are buying and there's more buyers, which is greed starting to perpetuate. Same thing on the downside, fear when sellers and the price is going down. So you're really reading the emotion of the investing world by reading charts. And if you're a psychologist or if you're someone that's into reading human emotion and you understand the counter trend ideas, you can actually do really, really well. And if people are following me, that's what I really stress to them because there will be situations where I'm wrong. For instance, in the service, right? Terra Luna was falling. And the yeah. chart, I mean, this is one of the rare cases the charts do fail. Um, the chart was like, okay, it's into support around 40 bucks. It had come down from like 80 or 90. Yeah. So we picked some up. Well, guess what? It obviously didn't stop going down. Yeah. The best thing about it is I only had a small percentage of my portfolio allocated. So yes, we lost. But again, in the scheme of the portfolio, we're already making money. I think we took on money on, on Polygon already and some of these other sure. ones that did bounce back in the last week or two. So, so position size is everything. And then... One of the biggest things is because I've done this for 20 years and, you know, mostly in stocks, frankly, um, but now branching into crypto and charts are the same in anything is that you kind of get to this point where you're like, yes, I'm going to be wrong, but I'm wrong two times out of every 10. And that's <laughs> just my average. I'm like a baseball yeah. player and like my average is 80 percent, which obviously in baseball would be amazing. But in right. trading, that's what my average is. And so as long as I continue to put out trades at the levels where I'm following the technicals, the rest takes care of itself. Basically, for those of you out there watching, you can see how you basically had this vertical move down. You know, you had a little bit of choppiness sideways, but for the most part, it was straight down. And then what you did was you started to go sideways to slightly higher. And this is a bearish flag consolidation pattern. Mm -hmm. And so even when we were up at these highs, there were a lot of people getting bullish talking about breakouts. I actually was shorting it up here because it was at the upper end. And you can see the beauty of the chart here with the, the exact high here matches the high here, which matches the high here. Mm -hmm. And then look at the lows, perfectly parallel line right down here. Now, eventually this pattern breaks down. That's exactly what it did. Now, what's super interesting about this chart is that if we take care, let me, let me remove this. There's a new channel that we hit, and this is a very short term kind of thing, but this is why I actually bought Bitcoin recently. So you connect these highs. So again, this high, this high right here, and then back to this high. Drop that perfectly parallel line down and look at what you get here. So now you have a chart on um, on Bitcoin where you just when it was panicking, when UST was failing, when Terra Luna was collapsing, look at where the price of Bitcoin went and then look at how it started to bounce a little bit. So the thought process for me in the near term is that since you had a big move like this, you had a big move like this, you had a big move when it crossed up here and so forth. It makes sense to think that we should have at least a decent move back here to the US dollar one here. Yeah. All righty. So let me see here. So we can see it's obviously had these this double. I mean, this is this would be just looking back on it, a classic double top. Yeah. Which basically looks like it coincides, you know, almost with the Bitcoin chart. Well, mm -hmm. not quite. It looks like it hit the high a little earlier than Bitcoin. Um, then it bear flagged right here, right? So this was another kind of same sort of pattern, the breakdown. And then yeah. basically, I mean, again, this, and my chart's only going back to like late 2018, but it yeah. looks like you're right kind of on major support right now. Mm -hmm. So as long as basically when I'm looking at this chart, what I'm seeing is that, okay, well, you're right at this low. As long as you hold this $50-ish level, it's okay. 
Now, yeah. if it breaks that, that's where you need to start to get a little nervous. That's where I would start to say, oh, oh, you know, because right. I don't have any more data below this. So you don't, you know, it's like, mm. it's not like we have a low down here where we could say, okay, well, it's going to go down to 45 now, right? I have nothing sure. below here. So yeah. but right now it is at support though, no doubt about it. So I do think people have to be careful with the stable coins. I'm no expert in stable coins, but I will admit that I, I was... I was taking payments for some of our services in Tether. And once the Terra Luna situation happened, I decided to move it out and actually just moved it into Bitcoin. Just because again, you know, when you see something like that deep peg, you just don't know how far it could reach. Is it become systemic where it just takes down the whole scenario? And ultimately I'm, I am a long-term bull on Bitcoin. So like, let's say Bitcoin at that point drops to 15,000. Well, okay, you know, I don't mind holding it for a year or two until it finally recovers. But yeah, I think people have to just be really careful. Diversification is probably the best thing. And I don't just mean like diversification in crypto, but you need to be diversified. People, you know, last year I was like, you know, gold's a good place to be. And, you know, same thing. Oh, you're crazy. You know, gold's dead. You know, crypto right. people were like so in. And I'm like, you know, you can be bullish long-term crypto and then still diversify in gold. And here yeah. we have gold this year that's only up maybe a few percentage points, maybe 5% five, 5 on the year. But if you compare it to what Bitcoin's down or what the stock market is down, you look like a genius.